Welcome again to the Old Timers Wrestling Podcast. It's the Outdated Wrestling Hour. I have one of those weeks where everything doesn't really go, as they used to say, according to Hoyle. Hi, my name is Bob Smith. I used to be with the GC London family of magazines, including Pro Wrestling Illustrated. I worked for Colin Bowman at WCW Magazine. I worked with Sandy Krebs at Wrestling's Main Event Magazine, and now I'm the host of the Outdated Wrestling Hour. We're glad to have you back. And it's been an odd week for me. Uh, I live in New York State, in New York City, actually, and uh, I, I got one of those summonses that, you know, y- you've got jury duty coming up. And when you have that, you have to check your uh, telephone uh, call line each day for five days to find out when you're going to report. Well, four of the five days, I was told I wasn't needed. And I was like, oh, gosh, let me just get through this last one. You know, let me not have to go. And naturally, I have to go. On the Friday when this particular podcast will hit the uh, podcast airwaves, as it were. So, okay, that, that's bum number one. Number two, I'm getting ready to set up the show, and uh, my guest for this week could not appear. But you know what? It's big news this week. We all know what it's been. The death of superstar Billy Graham. Now, there are plenty of websites you can go to to check out the facts and figures and you know, about his health maladies. That's not what we're going to do here. I once had a a second cousin I was awfully fond of and uh, who died at the age of 21. And when he died so young, I was in my late 20s, early 30s at that point. And I decided, you know, I'm going to celebrate his life and I'm not going to mourn him because he wouldn't have wanted me to be blue. So I'm going to take a different tack and I'm going to celebrate with just a few short memories of superstar Billy Graham as I saw him. I did get to meet him, I believe, on three different occasions, and I found him to be generous with his time and really funny. I think he had a great sense of humor. Of course, he was he was long retired at that point. We're talking into the 90s, you know, when I was at the uh, Rockville Center offices of PWI. It's amazing how many people from the world of pro wrestling I got to at least meet. It must number into the hundreds. My favorite memories, however, are the first time I saw the guy. It's also, believe it or not, the first day I ever met Bill Apter, so it all kind of ties in, which makes a lot of sense. Ladies and gentlemen, I take you back to May 13th, 1977. Bob Smith, Rick Stickles, and Larry Van Dyke, a couple of my best friends from up there, pull our money and jump in Rick's uh, dented (laughs) beige Volkswagen Beetle. We went and saw wrestling at the Washington Avenue Armory, where we always saw it. And um, before the card, I said, I saw this guy kind of running around between ringside and the back. And I said, that looks like Bill Apter from the wrestling magazines. And both the guys with me said, I don't know who that is. I said, you don't know who it is. He edits, you know, all the top wrestling magazines, like, you know, Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler and all that stuff. So I put my fears that he might snub me aside, and I actually approached him. I said, sir, are you Bill Apt? He said, yes, I am. I said, well, I just want to make sure that I, you know, you weren't George and Palatano or something like that. I just wanted to tell you I admired your work very much. He said, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. That was the extent of our conversation, but he was friendly, gregarious, as he always is, and, uh, that was the first time I ever met Bill Apter. Cut to 1988, I ended up working with the guy. How do you like that? I love the cards. Um, this was a B city for uh, the WWF at that point. And this was during the year that Superstar Graham was the uh, Worldwide Wrestling Federation champion. 
they had promised the belt to Bob Backlund at one point, and they just stuck with their guns and, and switched the belt to Backlund at the end of Graham's year as champion. But you know what? I and a lot of other people think they made a cardinal mistake. Not not so much in making Backlund champion, but in allowing Graham to lose the belt so quickly. He was over. I know he was a heel and he got a lot of heat. And I'll describe more of that as I go along here. From my first time seeing him with my own eyes, people loved the guy. He was just so colorful, so verbose, tremendous Muhammad Ali like interviews all the time. You know, he was fantastic. He was about as good as it gets. So here I am at the armory and uh, Larry and Rick are by my sides. And here comes uh, High Chief Peter Maivia at that point of face and, you know, to bring in the house down. But before he entered the ring, here comes Graham. Now, Graham entered the ring first for some reason. And it was the first time I'd ever seen him and the first time I'd ever seen the classic gold WWF championship belt. And I said, how cool is that? Because I had seen the tag team belts and I'd seen other belts, but this one looked like it had been remounted on a really new strap. And it looked beautiful. I mean, it was gorgeous. It was perfect. So was Graham. I mean, my gosh, what a physical specimen he was. Now I know we could go on and on about the steroids and other ways that he got to look the way he looked. That's not what we're going to talk about now. Graham was over. He was he was a, just a wonderful ring psychologist. And yes, his matches were mainly standing on his feet. Bear hugs and, you know, the usual villainy ways. But he was over. Check out some videotape of his matches from MSG, particularly one against Ivan Putski of all opponents. And you will see people lose their cord during that match. Bruno Sammartino like heat. The opposite of what Bruno Sammartino used to get. He used to get the loudest ovations you'd ever think you'd hear as he approached the ring. But no, in this case, <laughs> the place went nuts whenever Graham was in trouble. And that's what this match was like, too. Graham was in a lot of trouble. My, my via gave him all he could handle. And um, my via actually won the match by countout. And the place went bananas because I remember some old guys sitting in front of me going, hey, you'll get him next time, Peter. You're the best. You're going to get him. He's not that great. You're going to get him. But you know what? I think people knew he was great. Graham was great. How he kept that suntan 365 days a year, I'll never know. But he was at the top of his game at that point. It was an absolute thrill to see him. I mean, what, what a... What a specimen he was. And I saw him at the armor several times. I saw him defending the title uh, later on against Tony Guerrilla. Some famous pictures of that match that made the covers in the magazines that Bill Apter shot once again. And also just, I, I, I saw one more title defense, or it may have been after he lost the title when he was te teaming with Ivan Kola for a while. It was kind of rare because at that period of time, Bruno never came to Albany. Pedro Morales came infrequently. But Graham came a lot, both before and after he, he lost his title. So, you know, we knew Graham. We knew what a sneaky devil he was. We saw him defeat Ivan Putski before he won the championship with a low blow that the ref, Benny Morrell, didn't catch. Come on, Benny, you can do better than that. He wasn't very good at balls and strikes at the league either. Back then, the uh, New York referees were usually athletic um, commission guys, and that's how they got their jobs as wrestling referees, if you can believe it. I got to see my favorite wrestler, Baron Mikel Cicluna, who beat S.D. Jones. And the worst Indian strap match I've ever seen between Chief J. Strongbow and Baron Von Raschke. Von Raschke, for weeks on TV, was getting his matches optically censored because they were too violent. He was squeezing the blood out of people's heads with his claw. And here comes Strongbow. This match lasted about five minutes, and doggone it, just the, the lamest, one of the worst matches that got hyped that I've ever seen. They put the straps on him. They tussle around for a bit. And at one point, about three and a half, four minutes in, Graham wrapped the strap around the ring post so that Von Raschke couldn't get back into the ring, and he won by count out because Von Raschke couldn't get in. 
Seriously. It was so bad. There, they, they, there was a lot of matches, I remember, that Armory where people hardly worked. There was another match between Putski and George Animal Steel that does rank as the worst match I've ever seen, mainly because they locked up once. The rest of the time, um, Steel was running around the ring, not wanting to get in the ring, and they counted him out. And it was such a, a baby face crowd there. The place erupted in cheers, even though they had seen nothing. <laughs> nothing. There was not, nothing happened in the match. But that was the type of place the Washington Avenue Armory was in the 70s. The good guys got a win. Also got to see Mark Tendler versus Rocky Tamayo during that card. But it all seemed so much bigger than life back then. Me and Rick and Larry, we'd go off and it all seemed so important. Matches had been hyped on championship wrestling in our local station, Channel 6 in Albany. So those those are my memories of the first time seeing the uh, Lavender tighted, by the way, Superstar Graham. But he, he had such a wonderful career. Who can forget his stint in Florida with Kevin Sullivan and all that stuff? And he did really start to slow down, even by the early 80s. I remember the uh, NWF, the Upstart Federation, I saw him at the Starlight Theater in Latham, which is one of those theaters in the round. It was a perfect place for wrestling and a great card. It was promoted um, locally, and it was DC Drake was the booker, and Superstar Graham took on a heel manager named Damian Kane. It's a short match, but I noticed most of Graham's matches by the point were getting shorter and shorter. Usually, usually one with an elbow drop, but he he wasn't feeling well. He wasn't doing good physically. I think that started way back when he became the Karate Kid when, on his second stint back in the WWF with the Grand Wizard. But nobody could talk like Graham. So many people copied him. They're all admitting it now. You know, they're all admitting it now. He's getting props from Hulk Hogan, from Ric Flair, from anybody who was around at the scene. That one golden year as WWF champion, like you'll never see these days. Talk about great talkers. I mean, he was one of them. As good as Dusty Rhodes, you know, put him on the same plateau. As good as Ric Flair in a different kind of a way. Braggadocio, handsome. Women loved him. Women just love Superstar Graham. Holy smokes. And we have followed his health deteriorate in various ways over the course of, well, ever since he retired from wrestling. That's been an easy thing to watch or hear about. But every time he'd show up, You'd enjoy it. Do you remember his stint as a color commentator on MSG cards and various other WWF programming? I sure did. He was really good on the mic, too. It was a good choice to make him an announcer for when he was. I also am well aware of Graham's proclivity for speaking his mind regardless of the cost. He found himself at loggerheads with Vince McMahon and the WWF many times. He had some really harsh things to say about Abdullah the Butcher when the Butcher was inducted into the WWF Hall of Fame, or I should say WWE at this point. And, you know, he'd, he'd find himself ostracized or, you know, ignored for whatever reason. But you know what? He was an honest guy, I'll tell you that much. And he had no filter, and he would say whatever was on his mind, whether he was involved in something or not. You know why he said it? I'll tell you why. Just from the few scant times I got to meet him. He loved wrestling. He loved the business. He understood the business. A great ring psychology major, I'll tell you. Holy smokes. He could do it all. So I don't know what to say other than anything that happened this week in AEW or the WWE or the Indies or just have been set aside in a lot of people's hearts and minds right now because of superstar Billy Graham. I don't want to be corny, but I'm wishing his, his family, his loved ones, all the best right now. The whole wrestling nation is thinking about him right now as I say these things. And it's going to be a short podcast tonight. There's no other news right now. We have a lot of guests coming up. But I'm going to do a rundown uh, when I'm done with this little soliloquy here. But right now, Graham's, Graham is the thing, and he deserves to be. That one golden year as the champion of the federation I used to watch. Hard not to be wistful. And more than a little sad. Time passes. People leave us. 
things change. Not always for the better. But the wrestling world was made all the better by superstar Billy Graham. That's a fact that nobody can dispute. I would be very much remiss if I didn't mention my favorite Superstar Billy Graham match. Of course, as an East Coast guy, it was 1977 at MSG, the legendary, short but great Texas Boulevard match against Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream at his height. These two guys slamming a cowbell into each other over and over and over again, hanging each other with the rope. I mean, it was just mass carnage for <laughs> the 11 or 12 minutes that the match lasted. Now, Chief J. Strongbow, an aging Strongbow, was assigned as the special guest referee. He really detracted from it because back then, if there was a face as a referee, they were always favoring the good guy and coming down too hard on the bad guy. You know how it worked. Dusty won by count out, but both guys really gave it their all for the longest time. It was just blood, you know, double blood. You know how it goes. It, it, it was a perfect example of a feud blow off for its era, you know, in terms of uh, the face would come out, eke out a victory somehow. And uh, it left the heel with enough heat, enough juice to claim afterwards, ah, oh, he never pinned me or something akin to that. It was the classic way to uh, end a feud in that type of a finish. But it was a great feud. Holy smokes. I don't know if it was as good as Bruno versus Graham, but uh, Dusty Rhodes versus Graham was something to watch. Get on Peacock. Get on YouTube. Don't miss those bouts. Every one of them is well worth checking out. Thank goodness for the miracle of videotape. That's all I have to say. You know, I've really grown to enjoy a lot of the wrestling podcasts that are out there these days. I love Shut Up and Wrestle with Brian R. Solomon, not only, not only because I like him as a writer, but he brings on guests that are offbeat, people you don't know and never would think of, and you listen to the show and you're still thoroughly entertained. Got to hand it to uh, Brian Lass. He knows how to pick them because that, that's a great podcast. I'm hoping this is a little bit like Brian's podcast in that I'm going to bring people on that you may not hear everywhere or maybe you've never even heard of but i think they're interesting ratings be damned <laughs> okay uh, they, i'm doing this show because it's a labor of love for me and i'm reacquainting with a lot of old friends and and getting involved with a lot of things that uh, i never dreamed i would after well kind of you know leaving the wrestling behind for decades but i'm not doing that anymore i had too much fun with it and uh, all my memories are good so uh, we're going to have a lot of really cool stuff coming up in the weeks ahead and a lot of guests. Uh, I'm not going to name them all because, you know, I have to finalize a few, but uh, one of our highest rated shows to, to date was the Larry Zabisco, Bruno San Martino feud episode and Javier Oist is going to come back on the show. I am so impressed with that young man. I can't even put it into words. Good writer. You know, pro wrestling stories, too. Tip of the cap to that great website. I, I'm really starting to really get into that and reading a lot more stuff. They're hitting topics that I forgot about and I thought should have been hit. And they're they're ringing a bell. They're doing a great job. So check out that website, Pro Wrestling Stories. Craig Peters has agreed to come back again. Um, I'm hoping a certain other couple of people from PWI will find their way uh, clear to come and uh, sit and chat once again. We're going to do a show on the AWA coming up very soon, very soon, with a special guest, someone you may not have heard of, but I'm going to leave the cat in the bag on that one. Uh, he's an expert, and we're, we're really going to do a deep dive into the American Wrestling Association as heralded and uh, enjoyed by so many fans in the Midwest and eventually by everybody when they hit ESPN. Coming on to the show soon is going to be a guy I've admired for a long time for personal reasons, 
it's used to be dynamic. Now he's nostalgic Dave Dynasty, and we're going to get him on the show to talk about uh, all kinds of things. But I want to thank him for helping me expand my wrestling knowledge. We'll have fun with Dave because he's, uh, I believe he's going to revive his podcast soon, and I can't wait for that. He had a great nostalgia podcast, and I like those. Also, there's a, a fellow who's done a little wrestling writing named Joe Puccio, who's going to come on our show. And people are saying they've just discovered the show recently and they're enjoying it. I like that. They talk about things they want to hear and I take it all under advisement. I really do. Um, but this is who this show is for. It's for the people who bought the wrestling magazines, who long for the old days, who still can't forget their favorite wrestlers and compare them to today's wrestling. Nothing wrong with today's wrestling for the most part. It's got a lot of problems, though. Holy smoke, does it have some problems. I may do an upcoming show based on something that I think is a really bad trend in wrestling. I just need to get my facts and figures and get somebody on to talk about that. Oh, and I don't want to forget, and I have a challenge for the World Wrestling Entertainment Company. Major League Baseball celebrates the life of Jackie Robinson, the most groundbreaking player in the history of the major leagues, by retiring his number completely, not just with the Dodgers, but from all teams. No one will ever wear number 42 again. You know, they always say WWE superstars. And there have been other wrestlers with the name superstar in their uh, title. They deserve it. Great wrestlers like Bill Dundee. I'm not putting, you know, I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. The mass superstar is another one. And I say after this, no wrestler should ever use the word superstar in their name again. And even the WWE should not say WWE superstar. You know why? There's only one superstar. That was Billy Graham. Our opening and closing theme is Hold On A Sec by a fine guitarist named Brian Teo. We have a website, outdatedwrestlinghour.buzzsprout.com. It's great for people who don't want to download podcast apps. You can listen to all the episodes right then and there. Gmail, like I said before, outdatedwrestling at gmail.com. Write to us. Talk about anything you want. I'm Bob Smith, NYC at Twitter. At Facebook, I'm Robert Smith. If you enjoy us on any of your favorite podcast apps, please favorite us, subscribe to us. Any little click helps. It really does. I will never ask for money or sell you stuff on this podcast. Uh, I'm, I'm just making a go of it. This is a labor of love for me. So I'm going to leave you, like I always do, with a quote from a great wrestler. This time, it's all-time East Coast favorite. And they loved him in Texas, too. Ivan Putzky, who after his match in Albany, grabbed the mic and said, Graham, you're nothing but a cheater. <laughs>